attorney and convicted killer Alec Murdoch pleaded guilty to 22, count them, 22 federal charges on financial crimes. Murdoch said today when asked about his guilty plea and why he was doing this, he said he wanted to take responsibility so that the people he hurt, like his son, could see him take responsibility and own up to what he has done. Joining us once again today is Carl B. Grant. Uh, a lot to get through today about what this means, but a very interesting day in Listen, court. Listen, let me just, I, I, have to, I, I have to ask Carl, let me see how can I phrase this. So taking the concept of taking responsibility, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. Your assessment of whether that's what this really is, considering he tried to use this as an explanation it, it, as a part of his defense in the original trial. Is that really taking responsibility? Well, in federal court, if you accept responsibility by pleading guilty, that is one of the factors that is considered in the federal sentencing guidelines. Okay. The mere fact that you decided to plead guilty as opposed to going to trial means you have accepted responsibility. So that is a factor. Okay. Now, of course, the question <coughs> is, what does it really mean in the total scheme of things? Mm -hmm. Was this really acceptance of responsibility? Or was it a strategy to get this matter resolved in federal court to have a sentence hanging over your head in federal court first and foremost? There are reasons why they would want to do that. Yeah, and I was wondering what impact obviously would this have or could it have on the sentence he's currently serving uh, for the double murder of his son and his wife? Mm -hmm. Probably not much right now. Now let me tell you what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. As long as those sentences exist, Probably not much. He'll still serve time in, in the state prison. However, I do foresee a sweet spot of opportunity for the defense. Really? Here's what it is. Since he has not been convicted yet of the financial crimes in state court, since he has this pending motion for a new trial in the state court to be heard at some point by Judge Newman, if indeed Judge Newman grants his motion, no matter how unlikely, unlikely it may seem, if he decides to grant his motion, at that very moment, the only charge that he has where he's already been convicted mm -hmm. is a federal court crime. Wow. Okay? And therefore, at that moment, he would be subject to the jurisdiction immediately of the federal court and would probably be uh, taken up and sentenced to the Department of Bureaus, Federal Bureaus of Prisons, mm -hmm. I should say. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would then get custody of him. So that would be the sweet spot if the judge were to grant his motion. If the judge were to deny his motion, he'd probably go right back, of course, to to the uh, state penitentiary. And of course, at that point, I would imagine both sides would really appeal. Right. Regardless as to what happens in this hearing, you can imagine they're gonna be cross appeals one way or another. One way yeah. or another, That's right? right. Absolutely. If the state loses, they're gonna appeal. The defense loses, they're gonna appeal. I imagine this matter will ultimately be decided by the South Carolina Appellate Court, who knows, state Supreme Court, and maybe even the United States Supreme Court, wow. because this is a case of first impressions across the whole country. Mm. It, it really is. You know, earlier in one of our conversations, either this week or last week, we talked about his possible motivation for pleading guilty to these federal crimes. And you talked about the idea of him serving his time mm -hmm. in a federal prison right. being a more appealing idea than staying in state prison. So when we look at the probable sentences for these federal crimes, what, what is the kind of the, the range there that you're we're considering? The crimes that he, that he pled guilty yes. to, mm -hmm. maximum punishment on some 20 years, Okay. On the others, 30 years. So I imagine the federal judge will probably sentence him somewhere between those ranges. Uh, but that's going to be up to a federal judge, Gurgle, uh, in his sentencing. Uh, they have to do a, a pre-sentence investigation, <coughs> and then they'll come back before the judge, and the judge will sentence him in accordance with the federal law and the federal sentencing guidelines. Something else to add to this, just for context, when Murdoch pled guilty today, it was with the understanding of a plea deal, a plea bargain agreement. Uh, explain to our viewers what that is and what are the important obligations to make sure that agreement is met. A plea bargain agreement is exactly what it says. It's an mm -hmm. agreement to plead guilty and you have bargained to obtain that agreement with the prosecutors. Mm -hmm. Now there's various things. Obviously, there's got to be some type of benefit for you to plead guilty. And in this particular case, one of the benefits that Mr. Murdoch negotiated through counsel is the fact that whatever federal sentence that he gets, he is allowed to serve it concurrently with whatever federal sentence, whatever state sentence he gets on the state financial crimes. Yeah. So whatever he gets on those fin financial crimes, assuming he's found guilty after trial mm -hmm. or pleads guilty, while he's serving one, he's serving for both, two for the price of one. Okay.
You know, and I've been reading, of course, on social media, there was a local attorney who said, given the severity and callousness of his crimes, Alec Murdoch should never receive an incentive-based deal from the government, be it federal or state. And we respectfully disagree with the federal government's voluntary decision to concede to a concurrent sentence in exchange for his guilty plea and agreement to cooperate. That was attorney Justin Bamberg, who, of course, is representing um, one of Alec Murdoch's victims. What's kind of your take on, on that assessment? Well, that assessment is obviously he represents one of the, the people. Right, so right. he's obviously acting as an advocate when he makes those Absolutely. comments. Yeah. Uh, but again, the federal government is attempting to seek justice mm -hmm. and they're, they're pros and cons in every case. So when the government accepts a plea bargain and accepts a deal, they're obviously doing it and feel that that's in the best interest of the prosecution and the defendant. And they weigh a number of factors, too, in terms of the cost of the trial Absolutely. and other things and, and getting justice and, and getting feedback, of course, from the victims as well. Absolutely. So. Something else interesting. Uh, why would Alec Murdoch want to resolve his federal financial crimes before resolving his state financial charges? Because, again, the, the, the idea of concurrent sentence, mm -hmm. get the federal time first and get an agreement, which he already has negotiated, that they're going to run concurrently. Then once the state charges come about, you essentially have taken the teeth away from the punishment for the state charges because they're going to be allowed to be served concurrently. It's still a lot strategy. of strategy. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And a lot of times in criminal court, if you have a client who's facing state court charges and federal charges and the federal charges come about first and it's going to be a concurrent sentence, mm -hmm. oftentimes the state charges are dismissed. Mm. They'll never be in this case, of right, course. Right, right. But oftentimes the state charges are dismissed for that exact reason. And sometimes people view a plea deal as kind of leniency, but there are obligations that he will have to meet as a part of this arrangement, right? Oh, absolutely there are. Number one, he must tell the truth. And one uh, condition of the plea bargain agreement that I saw is that he has to cooperate with the government, mm -hmm. essentially tell everything that he knows about other crimes and other people's involvement in crimes. Oh, wow. And here's the thing, he has to take a polygraph. Now, wouldn't it be interesting if one of the questions allowed in that polygraph is, did you commit the murders of your wife and your son? Wow. Oh my goodness. Wouldn't that be interesting? That Carl, would be I feel very like interesting. the sound effect, like, dun, yes, dun, dun, dun. yes, I mean, you yes. Know, it's like, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that would be fascinating. But that polygraph is, is conditioned upon the request of the federal prosecutors. Okay. If mm -hmm. the government asks for the polygraph, and then, then he has to, to take agreement about the questions. That's right. Yeah. I okay. can't imagine why they would not ask for him to take a polygraph. Absolutely. Um, especially what we saw during the murder trial. I don't think that. Honesty and Alec Murdoch go hand in hand in a lot of ways. What's next? What are some of the next steps that we can expect to look out for when it comes to these financial crimes? Well, the financial crimes, I think the date set for them is sometime in November for the trial date, November 27th, I think it is. But the next step, if, if I was the defense attorney, I'm not advising these guys, they, they're great lawyers and they know their thing. And again, they're great friends of mine as well. But if I was the defense attorney trying to move next, mm -hmm. I would try to find a sweet spot of opportunity that I talked about. Number one, this. Mm -hmm. Try to get him before the judge for the hearing on the motion for a new trial. Because mm -hmm. here's the point. If the judge grants that motion, then he's at a point where he has no real conviction at that point mm -hmm. other than the federal conviction. Then I would push for the Federal, federal Bureau of Prisons to take him into custody mm -hmm. so he can start serving whatever federal sentence he's been given and now he's already started in federal prison and whatever he gets in state court, they'll have to wait on the federal authorities to release him first. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Expert insight as always <laughs> with attorney Carl B. Grant. Wow. Just so many factors to contemplate. I know. I'm All still right. stuck on the polygraph. I am too. <laughs> that, I am that, too. that was yeah. a lot. I'm, I'm looking forward to see what happens with that and if the federal prosecutors will request that. Yeah. So thanks so much for that insight.